Us, what's up? It's me back again, Analog Attack. <laughs> it's been a while. We've been talking for an hour before I even pressed the record, haven't we, mate? I, I assume so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I it was 10 minutes. I thought no, it was about an hour. It's about an hour. We've been rabbiting on a couple of old women. Today I've got a staff. From the <laughs> <laughs> Staff's there all the way from Bristol. How you doing, mate? All good. And you, Mike, how are you? I'm very fine. Right, all the better for seeing you. Really cheesy doing this. I've known you three hundred years. <laughs> anyway, you're looking lovely. Why? Why? Why are you're... we here? Yeah, to discuss Wait. my look. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And then uh, Bristol. Right. Bristol. And other stuff. But you know, <laughs> I, I thought we'd start off with what you've been doing. Like you know, the band, oh, the been... label, the fans. Um... Let's start oh, sorry, with and Screamer, um, well, we broke up ages ago. Yeah. Well, I left. Someone took over. Rich took over. He sings in FUK. I didn't know and that. then they broke up. I think they became Anus. <laughs> Try saying that with a serious face. They became Anus, and then they, they split up. And recently, last two years, we got back together, but under a different yeah. name. Didn't know that. So it's Screamer. But with a different name, it's called Satan Blues. Now, yeah, there you go. And it's we decided that because we ain't the same people, right? That we were 20 years ago, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and this more whereas before it's a bit motorhead and you know that sort of sound, it's more like the first Ramones sort of LP sound. Now, so it's yeah. not too much of a departure, but a change in that. Like, I think what people want to say is like. They want that Screamer CD on record, on vinyl, don't they? Well, eventually that might happen, but yeah. we all live in different parts of England. We all got shit to do with. Mar Martin's probably got to be the one that decides to do that or not. Like, But eventually, like, Jim, if you go on um, YouTube, mm. yeah. you know Jim Martin? Yeah. He's been, yeah. yeah, Jim Martin, he looked really good head to toe in lever, Jim. Like, right? He did a video oh. for... Um, Dracula AD, I've 1980. Seen it, yeah, I've seen it, yeah. It's a really good video. He, he did his pride on that one, right? So, um, it's that album, honestly, I'm, and this is on you know, honest, it's this that it sounds better now than it did back then. Like, for me, I didn't really get it at the time because it was a bit, it wasn't like anything else that was going on at the time. It was a bit well, you I was into know. a lot of other stuff though, weren't you? Yeah, we, yeah, we both were, to be honest. Yeah, like, um, yeah, I think that just shows our roots, really. Like, yeah. You know, slaughter the dogs. Uh, I don't want to pull names out of the acts, but yeah. some, some is punk and motorhead. I think had pretty in caps and but, GBH for yeah, me. But there weren't really many bands doing that at that time, as, as far as I can remember. So there were kind of a, there was a kind of sort of scene in it with like the restarts mm. and right. all those sort of bands and that, which are all good bands and yeah. stuff. But um, I suppose we were a bit bit different, yeah, and stuff like you know. Um, it was kind of heavy, heavier, wasn't it, than yeah. the most, I think. I gave but... my copy to Jun Warhead. He was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, wonder he's got, no wonder he goes mental. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's got to come out on vinyl at some point. Yeah, well, hopefully when all this COVID crap's yeah. kind of normal, for want of a better word. Yeah. Get around to talking about it. I'd rather do something with the new stuff now, oh, Mike. Right. There you go. To be honest, yeah. you know, I'd rather yeah. um, push on with these new songs we're doing. And we were, <laughs> we were going to record them, uh -huh. but you know, this pandemic happened, which kind of put us out of the way. We got um, hmm. about six songs, Bloody and I think the plan is to first off just upload them onto YouTube, yeah, and that's everyone can hear them, mm. and then. We'll take it from there. Look, to be honest, m most of the decisions start with Martin and then end with Martin yeah. with my input or something, you know. But yeah, eventually, I think it will. Do you Brilliant. know what I mean? Like, no one will care when it comes out. <laughs> oh, they will. I tell you, when I when I said to a couple of people that I was talking to that, oh, love love Screamer, ask him about Screamer. They rub their hands. <laughs> yeah, like this, like this. But like they're, are you washing your hands because of the pandemic, or is it talking to me? <laughs> All right, so we've got Screamer, and we've got to talk about Destroy fanzine as well. Cause... Destroy? Well, actually, before Destroy, there was right. Xerox. And that, Do you remember you know, that? Yes, yes. All right, and yes. I have got it here, and I'm sorry, mate, I can't read 
this. The eyes are fucked. Oh, now, same here. Bear with me. Yes, Bear with me a second, Dexter. Don't laugh, you cunt. Oh, Hang nice. On. They're actually quite similar to mine. Are they feeler? They are. How the fuck do you know that? Because they're they're the same. They're almost the same as mine. They're brain. They're but yeah, but it's they're feeler. They're feeler reading glasses, mate. Yeah, why not? I don't so want to fucking glass. I'm not here for this. Go to fucking no opticians or something. <laughs> this yeah. is probably where we first met, I think. Yeah. Right I might about have that sent time. records to review, even. Yeah, and this that. was actually um, some of the stuff you were distributing. We took on with the distro thing Bloody we were hell, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was this was my first go of. Um, there was another one. Was this there? was all about um, the damned, but oh. thank God no one's ever going to find out about that one. We'll leave that. I, one I remember that. I remember that. Zero. Yeah. 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 And if you see, I always used to mix it up. Like you got the lurkers and yeah. Doom, and you, you know go. Joyce McKinney and Cowboy Killers. Yeah. I wasn't always into all the bands, but I wanted to mix it up, up. a bit and stuff, which is what I carried on with. Destroy the first how one. Many, um, how many did you do of Xerox, mate? How many issues did you do of that? Xerox was just the one. One. Just oh, the one. Yeah. And I did do a second one and I saved up the money. But you know, you know the story. <laughs> like it's not I'll probably come around and see you, bought some <laughs> I went to the pub and that like. No, it was, but um I kind of fell off it. I, I shouldn't have done. And then I yeah. wanted to I wanted to do something that was a bit more sort of glossier, to yeah. be honest, which is um This was the first yeah. one. Yeah, remember that. Which was half tongue in cheek, half a joke, and half half sort of real. Only got a bit more serious Would later that on. Be around the time that skate muties and all that was going on as well. Or was that before? Or skate muties. Skate muties was before this one came out when um, skate muties was out. That was it's great, good. man. That was yeah. really good fanzine. That was yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. Funny. Um, I didn't quite get all of it. Me neither. But, um, we did, we yeah, did they, they did really well. They should bring a book out with that. I and think. then they did Bugs and Drugs. But that was that was that was them. them. Yeah, that was. It was all Beano and Bear. If you Bino remember, Bear, yeah. Bear being in Lunatic Fringe, of course, for yeah. for the un, unknowest and that like. But um, yeah, um, Bugs and Drugs was a fantastic thing as well. They they should really bring it. Do sort of a book. I, I reckon. Think, stuff, you know. Yeah. And of course, they did all, Bino did all the posters. Maybe we'll get the, to that later when we start talking about the Bristol gigs and that. Have you got some to show? Yeah, but they're, they're all here anyway. All right. Some of Brilliant. them. Anyway. Brilliant. Some of them right. are fucked, mine. Don't. Uh... It's, it's great that you've still got them, man. I, I bet I recognize a lot of them as well. I'm looking forward to seeing them. The, th the thing is, though, Mike, I've, mm. I've got hundreds of yeah. posters, even gigs that I didn't go to because I'd take them off the wall from Revolver. But yeah. I wanted to get a lot of it out, but. Things are just, uh, you know, you, you know how much shit I've got anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like so, ace. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like fucking all stuff you did. Oh, man, where did Scream used to play? I, I, don't, I forgot where I saw you. It wouldn't have been at the Tropic Club, would it? Maybe. No. We, Tropic Club had gone by the time we was, was it? there. We done Blarney. We played quite a bit. Blarney Castle, Rope Walk, London. Um, you know what, Mike? It's really sad to say this. I can't remember. Yeah, of you, can't. Like, yeah. you know, I really can't. and that that was because of the, the booze for the most part. You know, I was just trying. I get. I can remember things, but I sort of forget the timeline of it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, which came first, and like, when yeah. was it? And I get, I get that, unless I'm reading like, like I was saying, you an old magazine, yeah, like yeah. some old like Sounds magazine or Punk Lives. Then I, it just, it's really sad, really. I can see what I was doing at that time in my life. I, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. I can even remember. This is so weird. I remember like, like a sort of a certain sandwich that I was eating when I first read the first Kerrang. Things yeah, like it's that. Yeah, You can remember the traces you're wearing and all weird sorts. things like that. But I can't remember other more like more important. Yeah, things, I, like, I can remember the weather when I bought like Pugs Not Dead and where I bought like it from and stuff. Do you know what I mean, mate? Yeah, you know, yeah. I can remember where I, you know, but it's it's irrelevant shit. That no one cares but I, I remember all that stuff, but I can't remember the sort of important details. But uh, yeah, well, I think we're having just a, we're just having a good time. You don't think, oh, I'm going to be talking about this in thirty years' time. I better remember. Like, well, you're young as well, so you don't. Right? Yeah, you, you don't put um. It's like what we talk about, kids. That you don't put like an antique value on it. You don't put, um, 
you know, you it's it's you live for the moment, don't you? Or, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, changed yeah. a bit since the internet, but you actually lived through through what was going on at the time and stuff, like yeah, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. But I was really you know, bad. I mean, I didn't I didn't save like flyers and posters and like, or anything like that. I've thrown you away. Moved to, you moved to Japan, man. I, I did, you know yeah, I mean? I've got an excuse, I suppose, a bit, but yeah. you know, and you you were going back and forth to Japan and whatever happened in your life was getting quite chaotic then, you know. I mean, my yeah. life was pretty chaotic, but I always had my mum's ace to put, right. put stuff out, right, you know. So yeah, yeah. if I was having all the stuff I didn't want to get wrecked, it would just go go out there, do you know what I mean? Uh, like, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to do that. Not everything got saved. Like, not everything got saved. <laughs> Brain cells definitely didn't, do you know what I mean? <laughs> All right then, let's let's talk about Bristol. That's sort of the main thing today. Yeah, how far should we go back, mate? How far can we go back in your sort of? I, I reckon um, the first band I ever heard from Bristol. Cool. Right, and guess. then we can we can, we can okay. go into that. All right, let's right. start. If you, if you can bear with me doing a show and tell, oh, that's, what, I feel. that's what it's all about, this, mate. This was the first band I ever heard from Bristol, but not this version. It was the one with the um the ugly singer. It looked like a chess piece. <laughs> Do you know what I'm on about? But what, but like the like, top I of the pops, the, like the top of the pops version. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was your, that's probably what you heard. Remember yeah, the that? side. I'm a cider drinker and all that stuff, right? Yeah, I, I can't stand the words or anything. Me neither. But weren't they from Liverpool? Or am I? Did I? No, there was a Scottish one in there. But was wait there? on a minute. I thought I've got another. God, I should be more organised. Hang on. Bear with us. We're bearing. We're bearing. Right. Did you know there was a black bloke in the Wurzels? Did not. There he is. That's, neither, that's, neither, that's neither, like Adge Cutler in the Wurzels. It's like the sort of real... Neither did they. That's not even the fucking Wurzels. What? Who is that? <laughs> it's a Wurzels record, but it's a French release, and they got a different band different... on there and that. Uh, blew me uh, fucking head off. Any French people yeah. watching, please let us know who that is on the front. Maybe Luke would know. He would. Luke, sure, Luke, who's that? Yeah, who's that on the... <laughs> Ain't that mental? It took me French. ages to find that, and I ate the Wurzels, and it took me ages to get it. French like, pressing uh, Wurzels. <laughs> I know, they look quite good. They look like Steppenwolf for some reason. Could, could, could be Steppenwolf. I hope so. Um, yeah, anyway, the Wurzels yeah. would lead you on to the, the sort of folk scene and stuff yeah. of Bristol, because jo John Finch said this, and I'm going to mm. drop names, because this isn't yeah. my sort of idea, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But he, he came out with, there was like a lineage of like the squat scene that went all the way back to the folk scene or whatever the folk yeah. scene was called. I, I know very little about it. Uh. But um, another record, which is really obscure and it's a folk record is that one. Dave and Tim. Right. Don't know anything about this, right? This, um, it's got a Baphomet on the front. That's amazing. And, and it's about a bloke dying in a factory and stuff, yeah? And um, 1968. And I, this was in the 20p shop, and I thought, you know, because of that, I was like, whoa, I'm a horror fan yeah. and all that. Right? Is it quite but dark? Yeah, is it quite dark folk, or is it sort of jolly stuff? The music's quite, I'd say, in between, yeah. Right. yeah. But lyrically, lyrically, it's really power yeah. and that. Like, it's not yeah. like a Black Sabbath thing or Black yeah. Widow yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah. But back, back to that. Thing. There was the um, Scrumpy and Western scene, Mike, which uh, emerged from the Wurzel. Scrumpy and Western? Yeah, this, I think <laughs> this was like some sort of hippie band before they were called this. Bloody hell. Shag Connors. I spoke to Taff out of Disorder. Right? Oh, yeah. He's an and he told me they was, all, they was all heroin addicts that did this to make a few bob and that, like, so. Yeah. You know, it looks good, doesn't it? What's that at, at the eight? bottom? What, what's, and what's that? At the, what's that? It's a dog with a carrot. Of course it is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lying, on all their, lying on all their bags of heroin so no one can see it. This one's autographed as well. Well, bloody hell. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't really like any of this, but it's interesting for the the folk history. But back to re a really good folk thing, mm. album, I should say, is... Uh, I'll have to take the over off this. Sorry, record collectors. <sighs> Is this one focal point? That's the Clifton Suspension Bridge. That is the Clifton Suspension Bridge, and the original one of these goes for like a grand or something. Not like, you know, but 
the reason for that being a lot of it got got wrecked in some sort of flood or summer and it's, right. it's really good if you can find one of them because i know you like it I yeah. need to be in the mood, in the mood if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Least, I'm not going to elaborate. But, uh, who, who, who's on that then? Anyone we might know? No, I think they was, I mean, there's a big history of them, which I, I can't read now. Put your feelers <laughs> on, mate. Put your feelers on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think they formed as like a sort of sort of school band and that. And they, they put out the record. Mm. And... I don't know. I reckon you should check it out, Mike. I think it's I'm more gonna, up your alley than I'm mine. Gonna, and it's on a Japanese label. I think. Japanese label, right? I might be able to find yeah. it. I might be able to find well, that. I don't know. I'll just I'll give you all the info after yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know. But I, I know I know Lee Dorian's got an original one. I'd have had he yeah, got he that. Should, I don't he know. should reissue it on his uh, relics. Rise above relics. God, he does some good shit on there. That boy, doesn't he? Bloody hell! Oh, you made it. Yeah, the original I made. <laughs> Right, where do we go from there? Well, maybe um, let's move into the seventies a little bit, maybe. The seventies, which uh, punk. punk. Let's get on here now. What can we have here? Well, we'd have to start with uh, social security. See, this is a new one. Not that. Is that on, that's on heartbeat, right? It's on heartbeat. A lot, a lot of what I'm going to pull out in a minute is going to be on heartbeat. There's a few I wanted to pull out, but mm. you know. There's that one. It's really good. There's a song about a cider lollipop on there. <laughs> uh, we're not going eighties yet. It's still no, seven. Is well, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Heartbeat put out a lot of sort of post-punk stuff as well, like the right. art objects. Art objects. It's another one. It's another one here. Which was Simon Edwards before he did Right City, yeah. So yeah. You've got like things like the Glaxo Babies. He also did um, Stormtrooper from Bristol, you the new wave of British heavy metal, metal band. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the Skodas. That's also on Heartbeat. Another new one for me. Were you you were living yeah, in it's, Bristol at this what... time, right, Steph? You I've living... never left. I've never left. <laughs> never, left. <laughs> never left. I've never left. <laughs> you of all people should know. No. Yeah, I was around. Obviously, I bought you know, these originally. It's not sort of before my God. time, so. I'm sort of quite fascinated between that late late seventies, um, early eighties. I didn't buy a lot of the seventies stuff at the time, obviously because of age and stuff. But yeah, I yeah, bought, yeah. Um, you know, when you get, I got into much like you, I got into pop music and then yeah. into punk and that all via, you know, Sham sixty nine, yeah. Priest, like most um, like most people. But I bought a lot of this at the time, and I thought it was awful. I couldn't stand it. But you know, it's it quite fashionable now, isn't it? It's sort of come back around. It has, but I got into, I got into it. You, you change, don't you, Mike? The older yeah. you get, yeah. you expand. I mean, you must have revisited stuff and this, and you oh. know, I'm never, I'm never frightened to be proven wrong with music. I don't think you should be. You I think know? It's one of the but, it's made one of the good things about getting old. You don't care. Like, I just like anything now. I don't care. You know, you know, when you're young, you worry about. Oh, you know, my mate's gonna sort of judge me for liking this and all that sort of rubbish. I don't think he was ever that quite like that mate to be honest with really? you yeah. yeah well no you're a bit more wary aren't you when you're younger when you're old you just i don't care man. Like... i think you're wary of certain people like you can't admit to like in uh, a certain band but, but once you but... find someone who don't is on the same wavelength as you you're all right you're, oh yeah i actually like that you're right a heat record yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, do you know what i mean like you can get on with that i'm um, trying to see what else i've got in there um still on the centers this is probably mm. One of my favourites is this one. Pigs. Yeah. That's one of my absolute favourites. Is that a heartbeat one. one as well? No, it's on their record. I think it's on their record label. It's got the suspension bridge broken off, if memory serves correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So new Bristol Records. You know, and it was it was quite good. It is um knocking the national front and stuff. This one I loved when I got it in the 80s. I never got it at the time and stuff, obviously. But um, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. And it did, uh, Bristol did have its new wave of British heavy metal band as well, Mike. I'm, Which you, you know exactly what I'm talking I about do. now, don't you? Yeah, there's that uh, one. And I still remember Jaguar. seeing that band in Yeovil. Where the heavy metal what night. Are you doing in Yeovil? That's where my mum and dad and all. That's where I'm originally not originally uh, from. Right. But I lived there for right. quite. Right. Yeah. There used to be like a heavy metal night in Yeovil, like on a weekday. 
And I saw loads of bands. What year was that? 81, 82? Something about that, something like that, yeah. And I just went there, didn't have a clue where they were, just said Jaguar, you know, in like just black and white poster. Bloody yeah, hell. yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, I mean, on, you know, even now you listen to that, it's like probably one of the fastest. Like, oh, it's great, man. I didn't know they the were from Bristol. Great. I just stood there, just. Yeah, I know. I never see them. I know they played at the Bear in Otwells, but I, I never see them. I, I, I bought that them. single from the band on that on that night. Oh well, they had it. They had it for they, sale. They had it for sale. Little that. table single. Have you got you got War Games or is it Power Games? Okay. Power Games, yeah. The album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great album. It's That's good. connections, fantastic. That, that yeah. single is one of the best new wave British heavy metal singles I've seen. I, I'm with you on that. Um, Brown Bristol. Actually, Woman's All Right. I haven't got a cover for this one, sorry, uh, but. Um, it's all right, but nothing. No. I think this is Act this crazy. is the master, fastest thing on oh, the planet. Crazy. <laughs> Listen to the snake on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck the snake, I mean, they bro. look like rock stars. Like it was like seeing Iron Maiden in like a little pub. Do you know what I mean? That's what it was like because they were all you know full on spandex and. Yeah, you used to play with Paul Diano, didn't you? I did. Yeah, that was in 1981 he... as well. Yeah. yeah. With and trust as well. Out in in Taunton. Was that with trust as well? With trust, yeah. Yeah, oh, fuck you know. I'm jealous of that one. Yeah. That killers, killers tour. Killers tour. Um, yeah. th this is when people people go on about now. We're moving into the eighties. Sorry, All Mike. Right. I'm pushing you. No, go ahead. Pushing mate. you. Away, yeah. No. Um, a social disease single. All right. They they were very obscure, like from Patchwork. This is the original one I had. This is my upgrade. <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's all right for what yeah. it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, not much more to say. But um, speaking of people that have been in bands for ages, I think Taff should get a mention, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From the from the excerpts all the way to... Um, this is another one of his bands as well. Do you remember that? England's Dream Man. Oh. England's Glory, either. Is that Sorry. Yeah. pre disorder Yeah, he's on there. He's on Tough from Disorder, yeah. It's before Disorder, yeah. There he is. Oh, but he, no. he was doing bands. I mean, if you want to talk about whether you like what he's doing now or not, it's debatable. But if you want to talk about someone that's been about since, you know, year zero, as it's known, he, he's still going strong. Like, you know? what, what sort of point is, like, that, like, sort of punk go into, like, the real, like, people's like Bristol sound, like, Chaos UK? That's, like, 81, 80... Yeah, I yeah, mean, like don't, don't forget Voice Squad were not really part of that. They were a good band as yeah. well, you know. Voice Squad yeah. up there. Voice Squad. Up. This is speaking of Voice Squad. This mm. is some up you might not know about. I'm, I'm pulling out a few. Yeah, this is one of the bands they did, like a side band. Dave and Shane. No, it's quite quite good. New York Dollsy and stuff like. That. They actually played with on. They did one gig with Onslaught at the Grand Array, and that. And then walked yeah. off halfway through, but yeah. But um, I think out of all those bands, Voice Squad was the first one I heard. Right. Then it went into Disorder. Yeah. And then it went into Chaos UK. Yeah. You know, I mean, those Disorder EPs are magnificent, man. You can't. Yeah, unbelievable. You can't yeah. fault it, really. Um, but I think it's by that time it kind of changed, and, that, and then it just. I think when a, no one really talks about it, but I think Short Sharp Shock. Yeah was the album that really thumped it. You can't get more crusty than that, man. It's no. fucking mint. Then, you know, just that when Mo and Gavin, it just changed the old well. formula. Well, they became part of the scene when they come over, yeah, really. I yeah. mean, if you're talking... If anyone writes a book on Japanese hardcore history of the 80s, you'd have to include them, yeah. because they actually were adopted by the Japanese punk scene, really. I think... Which... Mm kind of brings me to um <laughs> you know when i had a lot of the records before you yeah it's because i think chaos and people were getting them and selling them because i had outsider before you and a, yeah, a lot of those yeah. records and yeah. that, but not that many but you know enough to have but that's that's where they come from and that was like through through yeah. maybe some of the maybe through simon edwards or someone was putting them in the second hand shops and stuff like straight away and that was amazing like, when know. i found out that you you had all those like some of those japanese records as well it was like fucking hell someone well, that's, else. that's where oh and um the continental kids ones that i had came from do you remember simon from newport yeah 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 he used to yeah. Do yeah they came they came from him you know and 
I actually went to a record fair in Bath and bought, and they was 12 quid at the time, which was a lot of money, man. Well, I, I mean, I was, them, I was yeah. giving you quite a bit of money as well. well I talked about like, them like, like, people were like, just, I'm not paying like seven pounds for a flexi disc, you know, like. <laughs> it was hard to sell, that was me. Oh, well, yeah, Because I bought yeah. some of them Griffin ones <laughs> off you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Especially that so one. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was hard to sell and stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, what, what could you, you always let me off a few bob anyway. Oh, there was always some extra in the bag or so. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Griffin like, flexi. You know? <laughs> <laughs> probably like that. that's why I've got seven Griffin flexes and stuff, right? You know, and I but didn't that, mention that's, um, in the 70s was the Stingrays because I think they were quite an important oh, band. Stingrays, yeah, yeah. One like... single was all I know of them, they was on Heartbeat as well. Because Russ, me and um, mm. go, you ahead, go on, you go on. Go on. Uh, I just all say, say, like, like Russ, yeah. the main bloke from the Stingrays, he's been living in Kyoto for a long time, but yeah, they were one of the first wave Bristol punk bands single out in the 70s. They were really so. And I said that earlier when we was chatting. It's, it's in there, but I, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, can't be bothered digging in. Yeah. But um, me and Gabba met um, Rob, who used to be in um, yeah. in the Stingrays, and then yeah. oddly enough, he became a Joe Boxer, and he was yeah. in the Gun Club for a bit and and Subway Sex. So chatting to people, you don't know who, who's who, like uh, but, I, yeah, I spot on bloke, a, you know. Quite a few chats with Russ, but he sort of he goes from like seventy seven to sort of seventy nine, eighty. And then he sort of doesn't really know anything about Bristol. Sort of Did he move that. to it's Japan that time? I, no, he didn't. He just was, he was only really into sort of just punk. He didn't like hardcore. It, once it kind of got into like Chaos UK and Disorder, he's like, don't like this. He's just a real sort of... Yeah, but he could have gone like Glaxo Baby's way and yeah. all that sort of... There was another bloke in the band that went on to be a massive attack as well. He was in one of the lineups of the Stingrays as well. I don't know about that. I'm yeah. not qualified to really talk about that, to yeah. be honest. No. Yeah, but, yeah. I know a few of the blokes from there, but not 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 enough to... I mean, that's, that's another thing. Bristol had a big reggae scene yeah. as well. And also sort of, um, you know, the whole massive attack Porter's Head thing yeah. as yeah. well. Which is which is good, but you you might as well talk talk to my hand about that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm clueless, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's all good gear, you know what I mean? Like you know, depending on mood variants. Did you, did you but... go to that? I, I probably asked you this before. There was that gig, and I still don't know where it was, but it was Chaos UK, Disorder, and Onslaught. I I can't think of those bands playing together. Was it not like a big headliner? So I only remember you, those three you didn't bands. Go to that, was it in Orfield? It was like in sort of somewhere out somewhere was in, in Bristol. I, I wasn't living in Bath then. I came yeah, up from I re- Bournemouth. I reckon you went. I reckon you didn't. I reckon um, one of those bands didn't play. I don't think Kelsey K played. I think it was um, when Lost Cherries played with Onslaught and some other bands at Horfield Church. It was. It was in the church. Actually, oh, I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon that's where it was. I've asked loads of people, and no one, no one remembers it. But it, it, it definitely happened. But, I uh, don't think Chaos UK played. They were I there. I remember I told you I went open the doors to the church with and with Spoon. I went with him. We went there early. And and then there was Gabba, he was sat on a no, it was Mo, I think, just sort of reading Kerrang or like on, on a on a chair. Like Why <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> not? <laughs> but it did happen. We did, did happen. <laughs> no, I do believe you, but uh, I don't know, Mike. I, I can't really answer your question. That's just my honest, earliest yeah. memory of Bristol. That that was that that gig. But I think what it must have been like 83? 83. It's got to be 83, 83. or late eight, early 84, I think, yeah. like, if memory serves correct yeah. and stuff. Like, you know. All right. But that was, that was the other thing. Um, yeah, go on. No, you move for Go on. No, no, I was thinking, like, gigs. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's the Mike Foster show. Come on. It's not my gigs. show. Come Let's on. Let's talk about gigs, mate. Let's talk about gigs. Sort of fast forwarding a little bit, because we could talk for hours about Chaos UK and Disorder, but there was so much other stuff going on with, with give tropic club the, the gigs there and everything tropic club you want to see the posters don't I you do, i do i do yeah, yeah. Uh. before we go to them the trinity played a big part a trinity. Trin- trinity all and i've got yeah. one poster from trinity all. i've got a lot of posters but this is the only one i could find oh trinity hall yeah. isn't it fringe picture frame seduction and yeah and the subs the yeah. mighty subs yeah, so Tr- Trinity Hall was where I saw a lot of my earlier gigs. Do you know what I mean? That is, yeah. uh, but if you want to move to the Tropic Club, then we should. Oh, no, no. Let's stick with Trinity if you've got more, mate. <laughs> Let's 
don't worry. Let's just get on with it. Um, right. Oh, I've got oh. one. I've done oh. this one out for you, actually. Oh. This is from your neck of the woods, from Bath. Ah. Uh, I was going to bring up yeah. Bath as well, actually, but I didn't go to that. I wasn't living there. Oh, you weren't living there, though? No, I didn't. I thought you were still living there. No, I was thinking about this the other day. Is it UGK or any? I reckon I moved to Bath in about 1987 or 19, about then, I think. That sounds about right, actually. So I'd been there yes. to see Amoebix, I, th I thought you might. but I wasn't living there at the time. I saw Amoebix loads of times, though. Someone switched all the electricity off. That, that, that one, that I was there. I, I was I was selling the yeah, coroner Yeah, they did about three songs, didn't they? Yeah. I was saying, I, at that gig, you remember Coroner, the Swiss band that had like Tom G. Warrior on vocals? Yeah. I was selling yeah. it with Tim. We had, we'd made copies of the demo and we were selling them to everyone for like a quid at that, at that gig. Yeah. I, you didn't I think buy the lights went out before you came here. Right, <laughs> to be honest. But I remember they, they had a bloke, they had a bloke on a synth at the front and a oh, Venom t shirt. That, 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 that I was gorgeous, thinking, what, George, what though. I was surprised. No, no, this guy was like, I know, I remember, I remember. He was big. This I know, guy. I remember, I remember, yeah. And, um, I mean, no offence to Stig or any of them. I, I, you know, it was what it was. But I just remember thinking, what the fucking hell is going on? And I think they did three songs and someone just put the, or the lights went out. I don't know if someone's... I remember, I remember songs, there, was like, it? there was like, uh, not Stig, but uh, the Baron was like, everybody, there's a fire, you've got to get out. And nobody was getting out. And he was sort of going, no, you've got to get out. There might be a fire and all this. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. it was and that. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, it was a real anti-climax. It was like, and then what do you do? Just I know. I mean, like... The thing for me was, you know, I've been living in Bournemouth in this sort of squat, grown up with the early Amoebics and Arise, and I had this sort of image about like what they all looked like and everything. And I sort of got there and they well, They got were brilliant. Off. They were brilliant, but like I was sort of, they looked like Jaguar sort of thing it was like you know like oh, well, by the time you saw them yeah they did, before yeah. that they had the old thing they i know they, i mean if you had a few and smoked a bit and watched them they was they had quite a presence yeah, you know yeah. What i mean about, like, I saw being, really you know, your late. imagination goes yeah i saw them really you late know? you know it was like that really late period i saw them but still good I, I, th I think they're one of the best bands to come. Well, i mean all the bands in bristol were good i think you know yeah but they they definitely had presence, definitely. You yeah, know? yeah. Real, they were like a bastardized version of Killing Joke, weren't they, really? Yeah, if you yeah. think about it, the earlier me bit. Like, um, what's the first single called, which is the best? Um, not, who's the enemy? Who's, who's, the, who's, the, enemy? who's the enemy, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's just untouchable, man, you know? Yeah. I don't think they bettered that, but yeah, great band and that. Yeah. But um, yeah, another yeah. one from the Granary. Did you ever go Granary? The I must, Granary? I must have gone there I must but this have... is that might have been the one that there. I was talking about no right this oh. is the one when that sweet revenge band played ah all right yeah okay but um yeah what do we, what do we make of that? that's an interesting band they switched style. onslaught were my apps onslaught mm. was my absolute favorite at a lot uh, and on my art, I can't lie, because uh, I missed out on Discharge in early GBH. Yeah. And when Onslaught played, when they first started, they looked and sounded like that. And I loved them. I I watched that morph into the metal. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. And I, I, Power From Hell is great, you know. Yeah. And I, I think The Force is a good album as we well. Got, but the yeah. demos, oh, my God. I've got the album. With you the got demo the demos album. album? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, it's good. But it's missing a lot of songs, I That's think. That's the though. best one. Uh, eh? I think it's missing a lot of songs. It's got, it? um, the one I've got is like back on back thing. This, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is missing a few, but what's on there is great. And yeah, that, like Ni Nigel's a good bloke at all, man. He's did, all right. Did He's you see him when they were that, in that right? around then at that time? Punkster? Yeah. Yeah, with Roger singing. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. I can't. It's, it's not a lot of people's going to agree with me on this, but they they're probably my favourite Bristol band out of early onslaught. I didn't like that in Search of Sanity or whatever. You That's know, got, but... I forget it was on that. They changed singers about three times. They 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 changed singers. And like... the bloke had a Grim Reaper. That's that's it. Yeah. And the bloke... yeah. 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 They were shit as well. <laughs> Grim <laughs> Reaper. I never liked they very much. They got the guitarist of Grim Reaper was called Dave Wanklin. <laughs> Google it if you think I'm having you on. Dave Wanklin. Yeah. 
fucking noughts, he is. Anyway, yes. now we're on to the, trop the Tropic Club, oh, and the, this is one that's going to stand out in your own. All right. And Dave Grohl was in on that. He was. I remember that night. And they were fucking mint as well. It was They're amazing. Mint. I bought a T-shirt. That was like you know, banging the banging the drum. Yeah, for... the drumming thing. Yeah. Banging the drum, yeah. And That's they, right. Dave I've Grohl, they stayed at, like, where I was staying. I forget whose house it was. I think, I know, it was at... Dino's Ice? No, it was at the, the Nesson Dorma house, Bristol Band. Oh, oh God, let's not forget Nesson Dorma. I, I got it out. Didn't they nearly kill you once? <laughs> You nearly died on tour with them, didn't I you? Did. <laughs> I'm still not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! I was about. I, I was going to bring that up just to torment well, you, I but really I forgot out about this record it. Out, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd sort of, you know, show it because I mean nobody. No, knows they, about they this do record. need a mention. Nobody knows about this record. They, they, nobody knows about this. But interest to like Phil, they Phil were Fudd, later of Chaos UK. He's still going. Plays, yeah, plays there's another connection there. And Julian, original member of the Subhumans, was in Ness and Dorma. Not many people know that. Yeah, and Tony, let's not forget and Tony. Tony Latton, <laughs> guitar hero. He's like, Mel, he's like Mel Gibson without the sex appeal. <laughs> 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 Funny band, though, because they, I mean, they came up from uh, Bournemouth, just arrived in Bristol, you know, outsiders, like, didn't, you know, you know what they look like, you know, they're just, Curly hair and like yeah 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 they, they sort of said it Paul was quite was the singer, wasn't he? They, they sort of said it was Paul quite difficult. Paul, Paul was the singer, Paul. wasn't he? Everyone used to call him Twin Peaks because he was weird. Do you well, remember no, that? No, he when, when like I knew him, but when Peaks, we lived together in Bournemouth, his name was Paul Mob after the mob because he was so sort of miserable all the time. That was his name. <laughs> but yeah, well, I think, interesting. I think, but I think they're a really good band. Name. They're a good band. They they need a mention. That really good band. Yeah. Really. No one, no one even thinks about them, mate. And they no. were a really good band. They were good, yeah. And they taught, and they taught you a lesson as they well, did. which is good. They <laughs> did teach me a lesson, yeah. Because they're consumers, <laughs> they are, aren't they? They taught you a really good lesson. Right. right. This is a Tropic Club gig that I know you definitely weren't at. I think mm. there was about five of us at oh. this one. It's a benefit for whale conservation. It was with Ripcord. That's one you don't see very often. You didn't go to that, no. And the, Ripcord... A band, you know, you want to talk about people that never stopped. They were a really good band. Actually. I'm going to digress, actually. Go they on. were a really good band. And then they, everything, you know, and people as well. They're really good people. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They became dumbstruck after a certain other band. And I Got think that. this is an good. underrated record. Totters is a singer, right? It's really good. In that. Totters is indeed the singer, yeah. It's, yeah. it's No one ever talks about these either in that, like, you know. Yeah. And if you want to talk about people not stopping, Totters has been around... You know, I've known him since we was kids and stuff. Do yeah, you know I've been what I mean? talking for a bit on the and, um, Baz. Yeah, Baz. Hey? Baz. Baz is great, man. Yeah. He's never stopped. You know, yeah. John's great. Good people. Yeah. Jim was in it as well. Jim, who was in um, Rip Cord and that as well. Down. And Lake Pong Death. Yeah. There's, um, I think this one ended up with a load of trouble, actually. It, I, I'm not going to say that in case I get it wrong. Yeah. But, um... This is one with Maggot Slayer Overdrive, which oh. he put out. And oh, Lethal God, OD, yeah. do you remember Tim? It's fan, our mate. Yeah, yeah. Leaf. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure, yeah. I'm not sure if there was an incident after this. I'm not going to say yeah or no. All right. Because I don't I don't know, all right? But, yeah, um, I mean, that that was our mate for a long time, wasn't it, Tim? And that, yeah. We, used to do, we learned a lot. I mean, wow. Tim was there at the inception of Black Metal, which is why I... I heard those bands really early on and stuff. Tim like, is know. another old mate from Bournemouth. I lived, I lived in the same house as oh, no, him, no. Paul from Ness and Dorma, and Tony from Ness. And, we all lived in the same house in in Bournemouth. Yeah, was, was Paul's room strange? <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten about the. Yeah, forgotten. yeah, I mean, I, uh, I've forgotten about. You don't, you don't really see. A, you don't really see. <laughs> Twin Peaks. You don't. You don't really. You don't really see that poster about much. I think no. John. John Finch is probably. Yeah. Did he design John, that? Is that? A... I think. I think Pig's he done this one. Uh, I think. Um. You know, Pig. Who, who yeah. Was in, sorry, I got to do this on the computer, isn't it? Yeah. Um. I think Pig, who was in Maggot Slayer, yeah. done that. Did that. He's he's doing a new band now, Cider Knife, and that. They're oh. pretty good. Grill singer. Oh. 
I mean, you might like it quite metallic in uh, sort of thing. Mm. Right. Back to the back to the posters. Mm. This one's um HR with snuff. I don't know if you went to that. HR didn't play, but snuff played. Yes, I did go and he didn't play, yeah. I think this was snuff's one of snuff's first first gigs. So. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. I thought, I thought this would be rekindling your mind, actually. It is. I do remember, like, right. HR not playing and then just snuff playing. Yeah, it was. It, everyone was a bit dour about it, but I'm not the world's biggest snuff fan, but it was a good good laugh, wasn't it? Yeah. And that. There was a lot yeah. of banter in that. Yeah, it was a good gig. And then there's that one. I can't remember much about I, this. I do. I remember, because Toxic Reasons, the, they were... They had a lot of eye patches and stuff, and they um, rocked tight, like didn't they? By that time, so. I don't remember Doom playing, but yeah, maybe they. I do remember seeing Doom there, but I don't know if it was with the same oh. same gig. Um, this one's at the beer keller, but same sort of poster. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you went to that one. I did. Yeah, yeah, I did go to that. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, as well, I really enjoyed that that gig. Right. Sorry, Mike, is it all right doing the show and tell? Or do you want to ask more yeah, questions? Yeah, the, more, the more the merrier, mate. Just bring it on up. Well, that's the more thing I was going to say. Right. The weird thing about, like, those Tropic Club gigs, there wasn't often, like, a Bristol band on the bill. No. Right? You get, there like, an American but band and, like, was... Bolt Thrower or Visions of Change or someone supporting them. And, like... Well, I've, I think that was because the Kronstadt Club band decided... I wasn't a member of it. I, I was too shit. But... um. <laughs> I think they all sat around and voted on who'd be there. I mean, uh, GBH was quite um, an odd one for them because it wasn't sort of, you know, like a foreign band. And that. I went Bond. to that. That was really good. I'm I remember biased. Bond, did you know? Know. Were it good or no? no I don't no. remember much about it. <laughs> no. uh, were they were they cerebral fix or was that something I else? Know. I know they changed just... their name to bomb everything because they got sued by Disney, like Disney or something. <laughs> well, the, he actually ended up the drummer actually ended up joining GBH did he? Bloody hell. Scott who plays for them now wow. he actually ended up joining GBH here's oh. um did you go that huh? maybe I, I went to it but I didn't see heresy because my girlfriend at the time fell over and smashed her head into a radiator so we had to go to the hospital instead of How seeing it she was alright yeah uh. It was a skate. Well, I'm manicures as Manic well. Oh. You want to talk about manicures and children's revolution? To him in All a right. Bit. All right. Go on then. Far away. Oh, I was, was going to say. Uh, well, I was just saying that I was going to say. Did you go to that BGK ripcord gig in Bath? Oh, in Bath. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. photos. Oh yeah. Right I got photos of that. I'll, I'll send you them if you want. Oh. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. The singer of BGK had an um, Exodus T-shirt on, or was it the guitarist? Oh. And I've seen Kafka Process in Bath as well. Oh, fucking interesting. remember them, from Norway. Oh, yeah. He had an upside-down cross tattooed on his head. I didn't really care about the music. That was good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Do> you know? <laughs> they won me over by that time. Um, another Tropic one, which... This one's a bit fucked, mine, so you'll have to forgive I for that. Okay, now look at that. No, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's great. Uh, what else? What else we got? I don't know. I'll try to fire. For, uh, do you want me to go quick or should I just go as I'm going? Yeah, just go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. Show, show me. Ah, oh. and that that was I didn't see that. I can, no, that's, that's a Norwegian bar, right? Happened, like, to be yeah, I actually don't think that one happened, uh, but this happen. one definitely did. And we were both blown away by this, sir. Oh, yeah. Amazing. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Brilliant. I think the only one that topped this one was the False Prophets. That's oh. the only one that done it. But the long thing That now. was the only one. And I, don't, I don't know if I found that one yet, but I think that that was my favourite gig in a lot, was the False Prophets. So, oh, Naked this is Reagan a good, one. good one as well. Naked Reagan at the Tropic Club was a good one. Yeah. Naked Reagan, I think they played the church. They did the same thing they, they played as well. We'll come on to that. And then there's that <laughs> one. That was I think this is one of Godflesh's first first gigs. 
I went to that. Oh, one. Uh, yeah. And that was with Lee and um, yeah. Mickey and everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. That, that's so good. Did that you go that? I did. I did. Yeah, I went to that. Yeah. Let's just go to this one. Uh, All right. That was mental. At the crypt. What it meant? Oh, that was one of the. It, it was. They did anarchy in the UK. Do you remember that? They did anarchy in the UK. I remember on being that, like man. blown away. Fucking amazing. Right, I'll just skip through this. It's just the NBC. All right. Like the Tropic Car. Yeah. That was, that was the night like, Rhythm Pigs, or they got their van stolen, didn't they? And they all lost their passports and everything. That was when something bad happened to them. I didn't yeah. realize it was their van. I remember. They, yeah, they got the Rhythm Pigs got their van stolen outside the Tropic Club. This is probably the shittest <laughs> fucking <laughs> traffic club poster you'll ever see. Is that one of yours? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Barrel Vino done that and from looking at it. <laughs> what have we got? Oh, this, there was also, you don't see a lot of these posters. It's when um, the Kronstadt Club used to do like sort of, I don't know, like a disco, like oh, in a nightclub. Yeah. So you've got like some of these. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. You yeah. know? No, I don't think a lot of people kept these, but being the hoarding cunt I am, I just That's amazing, shoved yeah. it in there. Yeah, Kronstadt Club. What's uh, the what, staff? I suppose we should tell people what the Kronstadt Club is. We should tell people what it is, right? Kronstadt Club. I might be getting this wrong, but it was like a group of people who decided they were going to be like a collective, yeah. for want of a better word. And... I'm not really versed to talk about it, so I wasn't there, but I think they all sort of voted which bands they were going to put on and right. what benefits it is going to be for. It, it was quite exciting. It was, it wasn't just like, um, there was a lot of people with different ideas, which right. made it fresh, yeah. as, as you can see with the posters yeah. and lineups yeah. and stuff. But as, as with all things, nothing, nothing really lasts. I, I'd say that went on for two, for three years, but you know, it, the nineties was quite an, early nineties was quite an exciting time, Mike, as, as you know and stuff. Right. Like, you know. and, and no right? one had a lot of money, but it was great. Oh, it was amazing. I mean, you know, going and, um, to Bristol and then Newport as well. It's like gigs every week. It was fucking. It was amazing. And what's that? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, I didn't bring out the TJ's. I didn't bring out the TJ's posters. I got oh, loads nice. of them nice. as nice. well. Nice. Like, I was going to say, was that anything to do with like, the, the, S, the, the, S, the S4A? Was that? Were they in the Kronstadt Club as well? That yeah, club? that was. He was part of the Kronstadt Club. That was Dean. Dean, yeah. Um, and he was put, putting out records, but that all kind of went a bit, bit sour in the end. And right. you know, some of goes. Right. All it takes is one, as you know, with self doing records. All it takes is one sort of blip in life, and then you sort of. I know. I know. You got other things to think about, don't you? Do you know, know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, yeah. so I don't. I don't judge anyone for packing any anything in because no. you don't know what what no. situations that that might be and stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, they were going for quite a while. DS4A yeah, that label. Yeah. They always have the store money, and that, selling you know, records at the gigs and that. Good. I mean, record labels obviously right at sea, but don't forget like um, Children of the Revolution and Manic Ears. I mean, yeah, they were quite pivotal in in a way. Really you know? important. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good stuff. Do you know what I mean? I can't think really. What else? After well, you, there's, there's that like urban legend that like when Tim like gave up Children of the Revolution, he sort of put all of his records in a in a skip in Bristol, and like, everyone went around and like scavenged all the test pressings and all that. No, that... I think you're, you're getting that. I don't know if that's true with Tim, no. but um, when when Shane stopped doing Manic Ears, right? We we were buying stuff to do for the for the distro and that of him, mm -hmm. and um. We went, we went round one day and he went in and we looked in the skip and there were boxes and it was just being chucked out and um, we just took the fucking lot. We went, we went to Gardner Askins, got, um, got a trolley and just took the rest home and that. Like, um, I, I sold a lot, I gave a lot of people, you know, traded a lot. I mean, there was things like, there was a lot of Swedish and Finnish stuff in there. There was tons of... Um, Early nuclear blast releases start raving right. mad. Um, whatever, man, there was fucking loads of them. But before that, Gabbard found a box of um, De is it Declino and Declino and Negazioni? Is it the yeah, the split. split? And he was just he found them and fair play to him. He, he just got a box. We he went to a gig and he was just giving them to people. There's that's that. fucking 15,000 yen yeah. now. This union. 
that record. Yeah, but the thing, the thing yeah. is, though, Mike, it's it. just like it's in a bin. So that's why it. not give it to people? That's it. Exactly. That's what I'm why saying. not give it's it? Like it to you people. don't. Yeah. I mean, you came you came from that era where no one gave a shit no, about that. No, no. That you didn't stuff. Think about it's, it's quite laughable. Like the no. everyone's an antique dealer, mate. I know. Do, I know. do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Every, I don't want to get into that. I, no. I'm, I'm keep, no better than anybody light. else, really. <laughs> so, oh, some of these characters from like <laughs> so, so like some of these like let's be up to, up to date a little bit. So, I've been seeing like this hot sauce. What's that all about? Hot sauce hot in sauce. Bristol. Hot sauce. Johnny Finch. Right. Well, that's that's John John Finch, ex Fringe, Maggot Slayer, and that. Mm. Yeah, he's doing his own. Um, He's doing. His, I should have brought the things up. Sorry, but I have got. I have got one of the products he sells. He's doing his own sauce, yeah. and it's a ginger sauce called Yellow Submarine. I've probably got that wrong. Sorry, John. But um, yeah, so he moved on from the bands, got into this, and yeah. one of the items he sells, if I can fucking find it, is. Let's get ready, everyone. The Jazz Coleman hot sauce. <laughs> Look at that photo. No Amazing. expense spade there, man. No Fuck it out. Bear. That's not I'm a bear like or a dress up as a... Hey? What that's designed not a, that's it? Not a... I should bloody well open it. <laughs> it's not a Kronstadt club. <laughs> <Probably production>. club. <laughs> no. Um, there's a tenner in all. I've got a load of these tenor. from Bunter and Punk Choi. Oh. It's a tenner, yeah. But it's magical, isn't it? It is magic. I wouldn't, oh, Jazz Coleman wouldn't rip it. Jazz Coleman would not rip anybody it's not off. not just the source. It has magical powers. Yeah, as it fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, he's doing yeah. all right. I mean, to be honest, a lot. To be honest, a lot. Of, a lot of people are still going in their own way. A lot of the old. I mean, Chaos has just done summer with um, Steve out of disorder, hasn't he? Has he? You heard about that? Oh I yeah, I did see a bit called. about that online. Yeah. Fear of the un- fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown that right? yeah. But that's that's pretty good. Um Gabba's never stopped. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah. John's John's doing his thing and stuff, yeah. you know. Um I, I think most people have carried on, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's just you don't really hear about it. Everyone's splintered. More so now with, with yeah, what's yeah. going on and stuff, like but, any good you know, like, new I, bands, I think, um, young bands. There's always bands, mate. Yeah. There's always Anyone who says they're in is full of it. Um, mm. I like a band called Slaggy. They're kind of like a raincoats mm. sort of style band, mm. that sort of thing. All girl band, they're good. There's a kid called Bruno. Like, um, he's more like a sort of 70s sort of punk thing. Like, he, he's pretty good, but oh. they he was meant to be recorded. Obviously, nothing's happening now. Like, I think he might be on Damaged Goods. I could be getting that wrong. But yeah. And then there's Cyanide, Pig's Band. They're They're good. You know, oh. from you know, ex maggots. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a lot of young bands which I, I don't like, but just because I don't like them doesn't mean they're not, yeah, they shouldn't exist. So, yeah. you know, so you know, I, even if they're playing, I'll go out, you know what I mean. But yeah, I mean, there's this stuff, there's stuff going on, Mike. Any anyone that says there ain't full of it, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's it's up to you whether you want to want to know about it, you know. You know, I, I like going that. out. To be I honest didn't like that me. about Bristol when I was used to go to gigs. There, I saw even then it was like all ages. Do you know what I mean? All the the older blokes and the it was all sort of there was. Yeah, well, that that changed. That did change for a bit actually, because you kind of um, you kind of left at a, when did you go? Two thousand? Was it two thousand? You left about that? Yeah, nineteen ninety nine, something like that. So you you grew you was around when it you know and with record shops and stuff which we'll probably get to in a minute yeah you grew up when it was good and you left when it was on a on a decent level after mm. that it kind of Did fluctuated it? a lot and then there was a lot of as with what happens like younger kids sort of begrudge the old you know there was a lot of that going on okay. but everyone's kind of past that now you know mm. and Bristol went through a lot it was quite sort of quite a boring town but then. It's almost quite bohemian. Bohemian, uh, am I saying that right? Bohemian. Yeah. It's quite bohemian, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like so, and gentrified and that, uh, for the word and that. Yeah. You see a lot of gentros around. I want a hand. Don't speak like that. That's a nice Peter, top hat behind you there, actually. Is that a top hat? Yeah, it's my hat. <laughs> Do you want a hat, Mike? It's a hat. What were the record so shops you used to go to, mate? Record shops. What What were the good ones in Bristol back in the day? 
nowadays, well, back well, in the there's, day, there's one in Canesham. So there's one in Canesham, yeah, now, yeah. Um, called Longwell Records. He's good. He's he's a bit of a wacky guy, <laughs> and like, like if you can get past that, he's all right. And any motorhead rarities, I want Ian if you're watching. No, um, yeah, he's good. It's it's kind of the same excitement you get in, re you know, used to get in replay, but Re nothing will nothing will replace that. It's different times. You where you are, Mike, in Japan, you got the chance to get in some. What's the most you pay for a record? Fiver? What just for like tenner? Sort of run-of-the-mill hardcore record or whatever exploring like, exploring records yeah yeah just like you know 800 yen or whatever i don't know how much that is like yeah stuff it, it's not like that here anymore mate uh, to be honest everything's a bit a bit pricier you know what i, I mean? know like, i'm a bit spoiled on the old but, yeah but what i was trying to think what are the well, records bloody, that i would have been going to fuck me man you're having a laugh are you <laughs> bit spoiled i've been there don't forget <laughs> mm. that fuck off spoiled. right off you got shops that pop out of nowhere like mr ban and that and then they disappear for five years Ooh, yeah 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 nah. do you remember that time you, said, you, you wrote to me go there's a shop that's just opened i've never seen it before and then he oh. closed and you never <laughs> can find them again yeah near my house right chelsea records yeah. chelsea records yeah <laughs> that was and what happened to it? it it's not it's not there, it he did, still there? he's definitely gone now yeah Can... yeah I, do you know what i mean like you wouldn't get that in bristol i'll just, oh, just walk down hallam here's a shop appear from nowhere fuck off seriously man <laughs> honest to god no you're very spoiled but fair play to you i'm not jealous at all no i know you're not jealous <laughs> <laughs> but i was trying to think the shops that i'd have been going to in bristol like back then so you had replay right you would have you would have gone to Garage Land, I reckon. Garage that would have been yeah. in that Clifton, yeah. That that's that's where um a lot of records like from Japan ended up in there right. for like maybe mowered sellers or something. Right. I know Gabba never sold his, but I know Mower and Chaos definitely did. Um where else would you have gone to? Revolver would have Revolver. been another one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was a good one. Um Plastic Wax, do you remember that? Um, no. Do you remember? It was on Gloucester Road. That's still there and that. Like, but oh. um, a lot of them closed. But what's happened now? There's a lot of nice little sort of independent ones and oh. that, like, you know. Yeah. Which is which is nice and that, like, but um But yeah, but now there's nothing, obviously. There's nowhere to go or look at records and that. Record fairs have always been my favourite, so I like to buy like all the sort of um Affirmia, am I saying that right? You know, all the, the memorabilia sort of yeah, stuff. Punk, you know, memorabilia, I mean, like, posters and all uh, that. Yeah. yeah, well, any shit. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when all this is done, I'll take photos of my fucking collection of shit and that. Right, you mate. can enjoy it and that. Okay, I ain't going to bore everyone we're on gonna, it and that. We're gonna... I'm drained, you have. Oh, you look asleep. <laughs> gonna... <laughs> I reckon we're gonna, we should stop now because we're going to talk another, for another hour or two, right, after I... Stop recording. All right, then, mate. Yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm fine with so it. So for everyone watching, I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we had, we enjoyed enjoyed making it. I hope you didn't. <laughs> I hope you had a shit time. <laughs> Until next time, stay healthy and stay clean. Yeah. Yeah.